and be filled here at this table food for all who hunger and drink for all who thirst drink of his love wine of salvation you shall live forever in Jesus Christ the Lord. You who labor for justice, you who labor for peace, you who steady the plow in the field of the Lord. Come and be filled here at this table, food for all who hunger and drink for all who thirst. Drink of his love, wine of salvation. You shall live forever in Jesus Christ the Lord. You shall live forever in Jesus Christ the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to each other. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give, over, give him over to your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. 
When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. presence of the angels I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to your name because of your kindness and your truth. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea, Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah. Still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When we know that someone has met someone very famous, a, a movie star, a, a great athlete, or someone, you know, similarly famous and well-known, we tend to immediately ask them to tell us what they're really like because we know that person's public persona, what type of characters they like to play in TV shows or movies, what they act like on the field or whatever it is. But we know that there's much more to who they are, that there's a, a real person behind that persona and that someone who always plays really kind characters in, on the screen might actually be very rude to wait staff or taxi drivers, or someone who is a big, tough athlete might actually be a very kind and gentle soul. And so we have this curiosity about who is that person really? You know, when the cameras are off, what are they truly like? I think that distinction between the public and the private is what Jesus was getting at when he was speaking to his disciples, first about what, who do the people say that I am? And then, but who do you say that I am? You who hear not just my public speaking, but also who share meals with me, who travel with me, who spend a lot of time with me and know what I'm like both in public and in private. And they are all willing to speak about who the people recognize Jesus to be, a great prophet, a great teacher, a important figure coming to speak for God. But Peter is the one who gets to the heart of who Jesus truly is, the Christ, the Son of the living God. He recognizes that he's not just someone who comes to speak for God, but he is the living God. And because of this great understanding, this truth that was revealed to Peter, Jesus gives him his new name of Peter, but also gives him this, this task of being the foundation of the church, as well as announcing 
the sacrament of reconciliation. The fact that Peter and his, father, his uh, successors, as well as all priests, would be able to forgive sins. I think it's very important that Jesus is clearly connecting this understanding of who he is to that sacrament. Because if we're honest with ourselves, the sacrament of confession only makes sense if we know who Jesus is. If we have come to understand that he is the God who has the right and power to forgive sins and can delegate that power. If we understand him as the loving and merciful and gentle person that he is, only then does it make sense. If we don't understand his glory and his power, then telling sins to a priest makes no sense because he can't do anything about it. The priest is just human. He's not able to do anything. But if we recognize that Jesus is acting through the person of the priest, that the priest is just an instrument, he is there, but he's not the one that the penitent is speaking to. He's speaking to Jesus. And Jesus is able and willing to forgive those sins in that moment, through the words of that priest, through that gift that he gives the church, then it starts to make sense. And at the same time, if we don't recognize the personality of who Jesus is, that he is merciful, that he is gentle, that he is loving, that he does everything out of a desire for our good, then confession would be a truly terrifying experience. If we are greatly afraid of someone's anger, then coming up and admitting our faults to them is, is a very dangerous move. But if we recognize that they are love and mercy, then coming to them while still difficult, while still a challenging thing to do sometimes, taking humility, taking courage, can also be a really joyful thing, a really freeing thing, because we know we're not going in to be you know, chastised or yelled at or given a guilt trip. We're going in there to be healed, to be forgiven, to be given the grace we need to make amends and avoid that sin in the future. Even if we are coming in again and again for the same sins, you remember that Jesus is the one who called on his followers to, to forgive not seven times, but 70 times seven times. And so we can go there with confidence, knowing that he is even more merciful, even more forgiving than he asks us to be. And so I think it's so important that we keep returning to who Jesus is. Who do I say that Jesus is? Bring that to my prayer. Keep trying to grow deeper in that understanding, deeper in that relationship. Because that's going to make my living out of all the sacraments, but in particular of the sacrament of reconciliation, more powerful, more genuine, more life-giving. And then I have to make sure that I am going to confession with regularity, that I am willing to have that encounter with a person who I know and who knows me perfectly. Because at the end of the day, we are all people who have met Christ. 
And if anyone asks us, but what is he really like? Then the most important thing is those personal encounters in the Eucharist, but also in the confessional, where Jesus reveals himself as the loving, generous, and merciful Savior that he is, doing everything for us and our eternal happiness. Let us never be afraid to come to him, bringing our sins and failures and being healed by the sacrament of reconciliation. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, trusting in God's great goodness and love, we turn to him with confidence, bringing forward all of our needs and petitions, knowing that the merciful God is always happy to give us all that we need. That church leaders and faithful believers practice charity and patience with one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. That temporal rulers and civil leaders resist temptation and root out corruption, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. Prayer that those who know the gift of friendship and marriage remain constant in love through every trial. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the Lord will help the people of Maui as they continue to grieve and rebuild. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those separated by death from those they love take comfort in the promise of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for the recently departed members of this congregation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community be healed of every division. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear, our, our, hear prayer. our prayer. And for the intentions for this Mass for this weekend, Christopher Rowan, Mark Glenn, Evaristo Boliadis, Mary Burke, Francis and Catherine O'Meara, and all parishioners of both parishes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for hearing us, for continuing to bless us each and every day of our life. We ask you to open our hearts ever more fully to your love and come to a deeper encounter with you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Come 
and follow me if I but called your name. Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but called your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare? Should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you let the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna Hosanna in the highest. 
We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. And to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer the sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, 
Grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into the heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, grant us peace, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Lord, I seek to 
dwell in the house of the Lord all my days. For one day within your temple peels every day alone. Oh Lord, bring me to Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Let's pray together the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. is one foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord she is his new creation by water and the word from heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride with his own blood he bought her and for her life he died elect from every nation yet one for all the earth her charter of salvation one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food. And to one hope she presses with every 
grace and dew.